In this video, we will describe how to add a new variable to an existing CCPP compliant physics scheme. In general, most of the procedure is no different than adding a variable to any other Fortran subroutine, although some differences exist. The CCPP software framework expects that memory for variables passed into physics schemes is allocated in the host model, so by necessity, some changes will be required there as well. As a result, we will be covering both physics side and host side aspects here. The first step is the same as adding any new argument variable to a subroutine. In the Fortran code, simply add the variable to the subroutine's argument list and declare it in the subroutine's variable declaration section. It is critical to use the appropriate intent attribute when the variable is declared. If the new variable is intent out, be sure that the variable is actually set in the body of the subroutine. For example, let's add a new variable called foo to the run phase of the NOAA land surface model scheme. We'll add it at the end of the argument list and make it an intent out variable. As with other diagnostics, it will be an array that spans the horizontal loop extent known by the scheme. Note that if the variable is an array that is conditionally allocated by the host, that is, allocated with an if statement, you must use assumed shape arrays with colons as dimensions rather than explicitly shaped arrays with integer variables as dimensions. For this example, we'll assume that the variable is always allocated in the host model. And since this is an intent out variable, let's make sure that we give it a value. Beyond the Fortran, for a CCPP compliance scheme, one also needs to add metadata corresponding to the new variable in the scheme's metadata file. Open the scheme's metadata file and find the subroutine section corresponding to where the new variable belongs. There may be metadata for multiple init, run, and finalize subroutines, so be sure to find the correct one. Within that section, you will need to add the new variable's metadata in the order corresponding to the subroutine's arguments. The required metadata fields are the local variable name, standard name, units, dimensions, type, and intent. A variable's local name, which is what it's actually called in the Fortran code, can be anything that conforms to the Fortran standard, whereas a variable's standard name is used as a unique key for the variable within the CCPP framework. When adding a variable, effort should be made to determine whether it already exists within a different CCPP scheme and whether it is already provided by the host model. A list of available standard names and an example of naming conventions can be found in the repository at the path shown on the screen, where host is the name of the host model. If a new variable requires that a new, previously non-existent standard name be created, one should follow the guidelines of the CF conventions where possible, and use existing variables as examples. If in doubt, you are welcome to ask for support. Units should follow the format like so where exponents immediately follow the unit abbreviation. The dimensions attribute should be empty parentheses for scalars or contain the standard name for the start and end for each dimension of an array. CCPP constant one is the assumed start for any dimension that has only one single value. The intent attribute should match the Fortran code and be one of in, in out, or out. Finally, Type refers to either the intrinsic Fortran type or a derived data type. While the use of derived data types is discouraged, some use cases may justify their application, however. It should be understood that use of derived data types within the scheme entry points forces their use in host models and potentially limits the scheme's portability. There are also optional attributes, like a long name or description, the kind or precision corresponding to the variable's type, and a logical denoting whether the variable is a Fortran optional argument. At this point, if the new variable that you're adding to a scheme already exists in the host model, you're done. If you're not sure whether the new variable already exists in the host, there are at least three ways to find out. First, as previously discussed, you can search for the standard name in the provided PDF that has a list of host provided variables whose path is on the screen. Second, you can search for their standard name in the metadata for the host itself, if you know which files to look in. For the UFS and SEM, 
Most variables are located in the GFS typedefs.meta file. Third, if you would rather not search, you could always try to compile the host model. As part of the build process, the CCPP framework attempts to match host provided variables to physics requested variables, and it will provide an error message for those variables that are requested by physics but not provided by the host. If the variable doesn't exist in the host, you will need to create, allocate, and initialize the variable within the host and add corresponding metadata to it. We will briefly describe that process for the UFS and CCPP single column model since they are quite similar, but keep in mind that this process might differ for other hosts. For both models, physics variables are created and allocated within the GFS typedefs.f90 file. They are organized into several derived data types, roughly by their usage within physics. At this point, it is useful to make the distinction between persistent and intra-physics variables. Persistent variables retain their value from one call or physics time step to the next, as well as from one physics group defined in a weight definition file to the next. Intra-physics variables, on the other hand, are only used to pass data among physics schemes within one group of the sweet definition file, and are typically reinitialized by the host model prior to calling the physics schemes in that group. Within GFS typedefs.f90, all derived types except for the GFS interstitial type are persistent. Further, variables within the GFS diag type will periodically be reinitialized and are typically used to accumulate sums for time averaging. And the GFS control type contains control-oriented variables that are typically set at initialization time. To add the variable to this file, you'll need to do the following. First, find the appropriate derived type definition and add the variable there. Recall that if you need the variable to retain its value across physics calls, choose one of the derived types that is persistent and that makes the most sense for its use. But if you're adding a variable that can be reinitialized every time step, that is only passed between schemes within a physics group, or that is a diagnostic quantity, you could choose the GFS interstitial type or GFS diag type, respectively. For our example, we'll add the new variable to the GFS surface prop type. Let's add a statement to define the variable within this type, putting it near similar variables for organizational purposes. Second, find the create subroutine associated with the derived data type and add an allocation and initialization statement. To save memory, if the variable is not to be used by other physics schemes, it is a good practice to wrap the allocation and initialization statements in an if block that tests whether the scheme is active. Here's an example of this in surface prop create. This is especially useful for non-operational schemes. If the new variable is part of the GFS interstitial type or GFS diag type and needs to be periodically reset, appropriate statements should be added to the interstitial rad reset, interstitial phys reset, diag rad zero, or diag phys zero subroutines respectively. Lastly, if the variable is in the GFS interstitial type, it is a good practice to add a print statement in the interstitial print subroutine. As with physics schemes, host models have metadata to describe variables that are exposed to CCPP physics too. The metadata file associated with GFS typedefs.f90 is GFS typedefs.meta. Within, it has sections for each of the derived types. You'll want to add metadata within the appropriate derived type section that matches the variable's metadata in the scheme. Local names can of course be different between the host and physics. Note that since the CCPP framework provides elementary unit conversions, it's not necessary for the unit attributes to match between the host and scheme metadata, as long as the code exists within the CCPP framework to handle the given conversion. If the units in the host metadata don't match the units in the physics metadata, and there is no conversion code in the CCPP framework to handle the conversion, the build process will error out during the CCPP step with an error message saying the conversion is not implemented. With these changes, congratulations, you have successfully added a new variable to a CCPP compliant scheme. Be sure to check out the links in the description for more information on using the CCPP. Thanks.